Hello and welcome to today's webcast, Bridging the Entrepreneurial Generational Gap. Today we'll be speaking with two very successful entrepreneurs and we'll be discussing the gap, why we think it exists, the risks with it existing and how can we fix it. So, so first of all, I'd just like to introduce you to our two special guests for today. We have Julio De Lafitte from yes, JDL Strategies, how are you? And Sebastian Eckersley Maslin from Blue Chili, how are you both? Very good. Nice to have you here. So clearly we have two different generations here. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's um, I'm, I'm the older one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a visual representation as well. Um, we have Julio and you're representing the established generation. Um, so you've been there, done that. You created a successful business over 20 years ago now. Right. Does, yes. it, does it feel like that long? No, it feels <laughs> like it was just yesterday. Actually. And then we also have Sebastian and you represent the emerging generation. So the innovators, the people out there who have the vision and the next big thing. So first of all, Julio, I'd just like to start with you um, and just want to set the scene and position yourself. Um, can you tell us a little bit about JDL, why you created it, what it does um, sure. and how, how it all came about? I came to Australia in 1988. Um, there was a, they, they said there was a recession and I came here and then told me that inflation was 12%. Mm -hmm. Inflation in Brazil when I left was 300%. Wow. So when I got here, I was 20 years old, and uh, so I had an economics degree. I would, went ahead and did a business degree, and then I went to, into the financial services industry. And I built a company, JDL Strategies, and uh, it's been just nothing less than a stellar, stellar conversation. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, people want integration. Yep. They want to know how to minimize the tax, how to minimize the debt, and how to get ahead in life by accumulating assets. Mm -hmm. So we got to the future first. We were ahead of the curve by disclosing commissions to clients in full. Mm -hmm. And rather than treating clients as people we want to sell stuff to, by treating clients as associates. Mm. Like the moment that you're my client, you're no longer my client, you're an associate of mine. Yep. And we grew JDL now to a national, national footprint. So it's been an incredible conversation. I would just like to say that Australia is wired for people's success. So as a, as, a, as, a, as a background for business, Australia is an, an incredible country. Mm. And would you agree with that, Sebastian? Um, founder of Blue Chili, it is quite common. A lot of people know about it. Um, is that your take on things as well? Yeah, um, we, we've got a very healthy ecosystem for being able to create um, new companies. And that's mm. ultimately what Blue Chili is about. Blue yeah. Chili is an organisation that co-invests uh, in uh, early stage companies yeah. by empowering non-technical entrepreneurs, people like you guys who have yeah. a fantastic idea for a new business but don't necessarily necessarily have the technical skills to be mm. able to code and pull it off. Um, and what we do is we bring all those technical skills to you as our investment. We have a development team here in Australia that builds every single one of our startups. And then we help all our companies, our new companies, grow, reach corporate traction, uh, get market uh, share, and then ultimately uh, raise capital mm. uh, through third party funds, but also through our own venture capital funds that uh, invest that money. So. Mm. Ultimately, what Blue Chili is about is investing in, in ideas and innovation and people, yep. um, just like with JDL, it's all about the people. Yep. Uh, and what we aim to achieve is to be able to do this 100 times by 2016. Yeah, so you're working with these emerging entre entrepreneurs every single day, yes, I guess. every single day. And they're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah. Um, so I just want to touch on this gap that we all speak about, and I think um, it's becoming a lot more common now as we do see so many successful startups um, coming in the land of opportunity. So obviously you think the gap exists, Julio. Sure. Can you just enlighten us? Um, why do you think it exists? And what, what is the gap that it, everyone it, speaks of? It's, it's, it's a great conversation, and a conversation worth having, because once upon a time I was a young guy mm. trying to, to, to start a company, and I you know, had the first employee, then I had 10 employees, and off we go. But now I'm 46, and I'm very clear, very, very clear that the people that Sebastian hangs out with, mm. they are defining the future. Yep. They really are defining the future. So how do we stay relevant, or even better, ahead of the curve? Mm. So the gap is this. People that have been successful in business, they didn't become successful for nothing. So mm. there are you know, work ethics, opportunity, a bunch of other conversations that anyone who is successful, they mm. have in their DNA. Yep. And it's this new people coming through, and they are inventing the future. Mm. But they are almost as if they're not communicating. They're not talking to each other. 
So for me, I want to hang out with Sebastian because the way he sees the futures, he doesn't see it through my lenses. Mm. He sees through his lenses. Perhaps he's uh, aware of technology that is emerging. Like for me, I don't even know exists where he's mm. creating them. Yeah. Right. So the two of us hanging out together, he says, hey, I know of this technology. And I go, hey, I know of this need. Mm. So getting together is an incredible, the gap really is about the senior entrepreneur that has acumen and success, mm. maybe, maybe becoming irrelevant really fast mm. and they don't know it. Mm. That is what the danger is, is when they don't know it. Yeah. They're too busy being busy, right? And uh, yeah, and we often talk meeting. about this, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And Sebastian, would you say the people that do come to you, um, as Julia just said, they have this vision, they have these ideas and they know what they want, but they don't necessarily have the financial backing or the distribution channels or um, the acumen that Julio has been talking about? Yeah, and I think it's, it's important to point out that the gap is not, a, is not an age gap. The yep. gap is a sort of a, an approach to risk and an acceptance of a risk gap. It's, mm. it's, it's definitely not a, um, an age gap, even though you know I am a few years older than Julia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, though, what, what, what I see is that, um, you know, if you, if you look at what defines, say, a corporate or a larger mm. company, a more established company, they've got three key sort of things that define them, so yep. generally. So one of them is they're quite fat. They've got large cash reserves, and they've got those cash reserves because they're successful. Mm. Um, and they're, they're, they're successful, they're profitable, so they're building, they're accumulating wealth, and they've got this money sitting there. Yep. Mm. The second thing is that they've done that because they have large distribution channels. Mm. They've got access to customers, right? If you've got large customer base, and you're successful and you're profitable, you invariably end up building a large portfolio of, of, you know, of cash reserves. Yeah. Okay? The third thing, though, which is perhaps the most crucial, and this is what we're talking about here about innovation, is because they have shareholders, mm. they're inherently risk adverse mm. because the governance structures and the board structures are all designed to protect shareholder value, which means it's a lot easier to say, no, we shouldn't do something mm. because we've got this nice steady growth path here and we're profitable, rather than saying, let's take the plunge, let's spend this money, let's do this innovation, let's do this crazy thing, knowing that there's an 80% failure rate mm. or 90% failure rate. We're not going to do that. Startups, on the other hand, or early stage companies and, and entrepreneurs, are quite the reverse. Mm. They're very lean. They don't have any money at all. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. um, they, uh, they don't have customers. There is yeah. a brand new company. They might have you know, a few little customers here and there, but they don't have the same reach that a corporate would have. Mm. But fundamentally, because they've got a very small shareholder base, and usually it's investors that, are, you know, that accept the risk these guys are innovative mm. and may fail, because they have that, they have a very healthy approach and appetite for risk, mm. and importantly, a cheap appetite for risk. So when you marry these two things together, you've got these corporates that have large cash reserves, have large distribution channels, mm. and are struggling to innovate because they're struggling to really adopt risk. Mm. Startups who need distribution, who need mm. capital, but have that risk tolerance, you've got this beautiful um, partnership. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's, exactly. that's, why that's, isn't it happening then? It is. Uh, it is happening. It's, that's it's, that's uh, why we're here. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's, it's, we are causing this. That's where unstoppables come to be part of this we're starting to address the gap. Like, I see right now mm. quite of uh, some of my associates, some of my friends, clients. There are people right now, Sarah, spending millions of dollars in their thinking and their strategy. Oh, again, channels of distribution, mm. shareholders' uh, ideas, and yet they're tracking towards a future mm. that one of those startup companies may make obsolete like that. Mm. So we, we know of, I can, I can start quoting for you now, two or three cases of this, where there's solid companies, well-established, good management skills, everybody, and then they, they, the management, they're talking about not being aged and mm. so on, but the management is looking towards the future mm. with a conservative eyes, which is like, I wanna be secure. Where at the same time, this disruptive or innovation, mm. right? These guys may come up with a concept, and how do we get those two people to mix? Mm. So there are no, there, there are no really uh, established forum mm. for them to make. So now and again, you throw an event, I throw an event, and people come. Yeah. But what we're trying to do here is to create this this paradox, this platform called Unstoppables, mm. where people become unstoppable where the person who is out there in a corporate world needing to deliver KPIs, they get an opportunity to hear mm. what's coming. We call it what's seeking to emerge, mm. right? So what's coming their way? And they could be hearing of a new technology and be able to marry those conversations. Mm. 
So it's fair enough that um, we were talking here just before the yeah. brief that uh, we know that people hang out in different spaces. Well, it's a social disconnection as well, right? Yes, is yes. that is that happening as well? Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. So, so, so the conversation between uh, Sebastian and I is that we know that we ought to hang out more. So between us, it is happening. Mm. But for a lot of people in my world where I hand sit out with CEOs, I, I'm speaking at CPA Australia, and the conversation I'm talking about is about innovation. Mm. And how do we handle innovation? Seriously, like things are gonna change and they're not gonna slow down in changing. They'll change more and more, faster and faster. Yep. That's the new paradox. Mm. So people that are now in, 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 in influence position, is it okay if I just take this? Uh, uh, Please. Uh, yeah, right? no, just no. This <laughs> just is not, roll with it. Yeah, that's right. This is not part of the, the brief. But think about this for a second. All of the people right now that are in their 60s, mm. they want to invest in their retirement. Yep. Right? So there are some key components in which people say, I'm going to invest in this and this and these types of investments. So they are thinking that these things are safe. Mm. Right? Because they've been around, established. But that may be the very thing that make them unsafe. And how do we deal with mm. this? It goes back to what you were saying in terms of risk averseness. So perhaps being innovative is the safe position to take. Yeah. Right? Because mm. if you're trying to kind of hold and be like, oh my God, what's going to happen to me here? Right? Especially with people trying to get uh, a return of trillions of dollars of mm. investment funds, right? And then suddenly trying to hold to what is. What, what is coming is so disruptive and may change yep. at any time, right? Mm. Um, perhaps innovation and being engaged in innovation is maybe the less risky position mm. to take going into the future, yep. right? I often refer, refer to Sebastian as a guy already in the future. I mm. love his business model where people are uh, pitching at him 200 ideas a month. Crazy. You know, so for me as a senior investor, and I, I would say to you, to you as, a, as, a, as a more senior entrepreneur, I want to be in the listening. I want to be kind of close by. Mm. And if I go to organizations that are entrepreneurial organizations, mm. they have joining criteria and they have different conversations. And when people join, they create those social networks of which almost it's established already what we're gonna talk about, mm. right? So when we create the unstoppable, is to actually smash all the barriers mm. and having conversations that we would not have otherwise, mm. right, about engaging with the future. So it's two conversations. What are we pretending not to know? And what is seeking to emerge? Mm. He lives in where what's seeking to emerge, and I love his model, mm. love it. And I wanted to talk to my friends and the executives in JDL what are we pretending not to know? Mm. You know, these are robust conversations that, uh, that thank you so much for having us today. Mm. And we can actually have that with a bunch yeah. of other executives. I think, and I think just to touch on this as well, um, one of the exciting things for us when we did promote this event was the fact that so many people are interested in this concept and they want to know what the next big thing is and they want to know how they want to be a part of it. So it's not necessarily the emerging guys online who are looking for the next big thing and want to see your experiences. It's people who are out there working in these big companies, but they do want to know how is this going to shape the future of Australia. And um, you did touch on the unstoppable, Unstoppables and I know what they are and we all know what they are. We know that you're involved in it. But um, can you just give us a brief... Um, why did you, how did this all come about, The Unstoppables? We know that obviously you wanted to have some sort of a program where everyone could interrelate in some sort of environment, but tell us a bit more about it and your vision for Unstoppables. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I'll give you um, two minutes for this one. No, okay, got it, I got it. I will say it's all about um, enthusiasm, but at the same mm. time, it, you can be as enthusiastic as, as you may want to. It's all about delivering. Yep. At the end of the day, you have to have the, pr the process to deliver. So what's actually happening is this. Um, the future is coming at us very fast. Mm. And yet people are busy. Too busy, perhaps, to become innovative. And those with the innovations. Yep. So Unstoppables is very simple. It's about getting to the future first. Yep. So if there isn't an innovation happening right now, how do I get to it? Yep. Right? And benefit my company, my business, to the development of this. Not to be dictated what the future will do to me, mm -hmm. but perhaps be a guy who's helping to create the future, Okay. right? So Unstoppables is a platform where entrepreneurs come together, mm. okay? It's a platform for grown-ups, right? So by that I mean people that are 
totally interested in investing in innovation, mm -hmm. cool, but not investing in like, uh, Sebastian has a process in which you have 150 steps that qualifies or disqualifies innovation. Okay. That's fine, that's his world. My world is much more like, I'm in, I will like to put the money in, yep. I will mentor you, I will help you, right? So putting those two together, mm. that's the environment that we are creating, see? This environment not taking place is going to cost us trillions of dollars as mm. a nation, right? So Unstoppables is to close the gap. Sebastian will tell you how, how interesting the phenomenon to get people to invest in Australian startups. It's very skinny right now. Mm. So if there is a message we want to put out there is to say to people, invest in innovation, invest in the, in the future of Australia. Mm. It is in one of the greatest things that we can do and it's not as risk as people may think, especially mm. when you have a process, right, to eliminate the duds, if mm. you will, right? And to get behind as mentors and so forth. So in summary, mm. Unstoppables is a, the gathering of amazing people to come up with amazing concepts and then deliver them to the mm. market. That's mm. that's that's what it's all about, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense for you to be part of them. Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, and you know, reflecting back on um, you know, companies getting left behind, if you like, the classic example that, that is often touted, but it's worth mentioning because it is such a great example, mm. is is what happened with Kodak. I mean, Kodak ultimately invented the technology that disrupted them and killed mm. them. So they were there at the forefront. They were thinking the forefront. But Kodak, as a business, was making the majority of the sales on film and ink for printers, right? But film was the major driver of them. So they were hesitant to let go of this safe, secure, profit-generating business model. They invented the digital camera, but they failed to fully embrace it. And it's a, an amazing sort of, uh, when, you, when you look at it, that over 100 years of Kodak, they eventually ended up with a market share less than four-year-old Instagram. Wow. So Instagram sold for a billion dollars, a billion dollar market valuation they got investment in, which was, uh, had put them at a larger market cap than a hundred year old company that invented the technology that enabled them to occur. And it's because there's this, this fear, this inherent fear in large organizations on embracing um, innovation and change. Mm. It's because business as usual works, right? Mm. These guys have been established for a long time, business as usual makes money. And it's only those that are prepared to go out there mm. and change things and understand that innovation comes from this healthy appetite for risk and embracing failure, and empowering people to, to create that failure that is gonna occur. Mm. And that's, that's a great example. And you know, we work with a large number of corporates at Blue Chili. So yep. we're building startups. We're also working with some, some you know, established companies. In mm. fact, uh, just yesterday, we, we completed a, a program for Westpac, 200-year-old business. They're the oldest, they call themselves the oldest company in yeah. Australia, right? Is Westpac brand. And these guys here have realized that they can't just stay still. Mm. To, for them, banking and finance is a, in a, a rapidly changing environment. Technology and internet, uh, we've got you know, mobile payment solutions coming through in it, so even credit cards are getting disrupted. So you've got this entire ecosystem, every, all the foundations they're built upon is being disrupted, so they need to be at the forefront. Mm. And they're engaging companies like us uh, to assist them with that. And this, this program we ran for them basically over the course of a number of weeks, um, we found them 100, over 100 ideas in real estate that were disruptive to the real estate industry. Wow. Right? In four weeks, we found 100 ideas and concepts, and not just ideas, but entrepreneurs that were prepared to run those ideas. Mm. So we ran this campaign this and found is, it. Yeah. So, so for everybody else now watching this right mm. now, mm. so if you're in real estate, if you are in real estate, if you are in insurance, if you are in banking, and you're not part of Unstoppables, you're going to miss out. <laughs> it's that simple. Because you see, because you're watching this right now, you're hearing this, so now you can act on it. Mm. You can be, you are right now knowing that disruption is coming, mm. right? So how do you gather? Yeah. How do you get, now? so now your curiosity as a watcher of yeah. this program, your, your, your curiosity just spiked. But he's just talking about one conversation, mm. right? So I'm sure that if we're to sit and go, hey, we want to disrupt that industry or mm. that industry or that conversation inside of Unstoppables, that is what's going to happen, mm. right? So when banking um, friends, platforms come to us and say, well, explain to us mm. what Unstoppables is all about. It's about people coming together knowing that disruption is coming. So rather than be afraid of it, how can we maximize mm. it? How can we benefit? How can we actually profit and empower others? 
to actually be able to do it. Mm. So imagine somebody sits with Blue Chili and say, hey, let's dance. And he says, yeah, 100 new ideas. Now, I know, Sebastian, all those 100 new ideas, you'll pick up four of them. Mm. Yeah. And I'm going to invest in them. Yeah. Here we go. It, but here he is the conversation that perhaps these guys need to watch. Mm. When we come about Unstoppable, so Unstoppable is not about um, just a gathering of entrepreneurs and helping them to manage their business. There's other organizations that do that really well. Mm. Okay? Unstoppable is about getting to the future first. Yeah. Okay? Being aware of what's going to impact your business. And it may hit you hard. Yeah. You know, so we're talking about Kodak, connecting with digital cameras. Now think about digital cameras. Mm. Digital cameras, maybe they're gone. Mm. Now we're talking about phone, mm. right? The cameras are now on the phone. Now I'm going to tell you something else. What about cameras on the phone be already gone? Because we already know of the integration between glasses. Mm. We already know that in two years from now, there'll be no phones. There'll be glasses. We're already onto it mm. now. Right? Where Sebastian and I were talking, we have a friend who is inventing, literally inventing, a digital accountant. A guy to smart technology, right? He's actually inventing. And like, so how do we deal with this? Mm. So everyone that's watching that right now who's a bookkeeper, mm. like, you're like, well, what's my future like? Yeah. What's my future like? Mm. This is what Unstoppable is all about. So you guys are having the conversation, which is great, and obviously we're encouraging people to be part of this conversation out there. But you guys touch on risk quite a fair bit, and we spoke about Kodak, and I think you just need to think of your Ubers and your yes. quick Netflix yes. and stuff like that and see you know, disruptive technologies and what they're doing to industries out there. What are some other risks involved um, if we don't start to bridge this gap and close it um, to the economy on a global scale? What, what are some other risks that we can... I'll let, I'll let Julio talk on the global scale aspect. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll touch base on, you know, closer to home with startups and, yeah. and, and, and entrepreneurs coming forward. Because there's, there's four main risk areas. Yeah, this is beautiful. Go four on. main risk areas for, uh, for digital technology. Um, and so there's, there's the team, there's the people involved, mm -hmm. there's the, uh, the technology, the underlying technology behind uh, the startup or uh, what you're trying to build. There's the, um, uh, the traction, how well you've gone to getting uh, your product into the market, your sales channels, uh, your, your links with other corporates. And finally, there's term sheet, um, which means capital. Um, the reason I picked term sheet is we couldn't quite find a word that meant money to start with T to keep that alliteration going. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you've got a, good, a better word for, for, for money to start with T, yeah, let me know. Yeah, put it in the chat box. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got team, technology, traction, and term sheets, the four fundamental key risk areas. Uh, and if you look at your business idea or concepts mm. and address each of those four risk areas in turn and individually and try and mitigate them. You never remove risk. You only ever mitigate it and mitigate those risks as much as possible. How do you mitigate the risk on team? You get really good people around you. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you get to mitigate the risk on technology? Well, why don't you partner with us? But you get, once again, really good people or you, you, you use proven um, frameworks to, to, off, you know, to basically outsource as much of the risk areas as possible. Mm -hmm. So you don't, don't, be, don't innovate on the areas that don't need to be innovated. Be innovative in the business model, be innovative in this part of the technology, but rely on established foundations mm. to be able to help you focus your attention and energy there. Um, how do you mitigate the risk on traction? You do relationship building. You work with corporate partners to get channel partners. That that um, relationship union I was talking before between startups and corporates mm. is all about you know, assisting that traction. Um, you, you come to the unstoppables because th here we're going to have an environment where we're going to have 117 entrepreneurs and, and business leaders mm. together on a ship for over a week, working together, mm. and that's how you get traction. You get traction get by doing these partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, on, on the term sheet, uh, on the capital aspect there, if you build a product and you mitigated the risk in the other three, you've effectively mitigated the risk on capital. If you build a successful business that has risk mitigation as one of its fundamental tenants, mm. then it is easier to raise capital in your business in the future. And if you have identified an offering in the market or a gap in the market and you're exploiting that gap, then it's a lot easier for you to be able to make money from that. And that's mm. how you mitigate the risk on, on, the, on, um, on the term sheet. At Blue Chili, our entire model is geared around reducing each of these four fundamental key risk areas. Mm. So on the team, what we do is we have a shit hot team in, mm. in Blue Chili that works in every single one of our startups. Yep. Now, world leading. Um, for example, the guy that bought uh, Yahoo to Australia and founded mm. Yahoo Australia is our head of marketing. He looks after all of our marketing channels for our startups. And I won't go through everyone's credentials, yeah. but they're pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, 
The next one on the technology, well, we have a framework called Chili Sauce um, that we build every single one of our startups on, right? You can see why I like a Brazilian, right? It's, yeah, yeah, chili, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> you guys um, are just meant to be exactly. together. Uh, and chili, so chili Sauce is a framework which, which mitigates all the boring bits. So all the fundamental core technologies mm. are already looked after, already built, which means you can focus the innovation on the exciting part, on the mm. innovative bit. So you imagine, just let me, I just want to interrupt this. If you're watching this right now, and you didn't even know that this hot sauce existed. <laughs> Babe, you need to get some of that hot sauce. I'm telling you. Can now. we bottle it? <laughs> uh, abso absolutely. So, and like Sebastian, we need to bring this home to Australia. So I have to interrupt, but when I first became aware of your protocol, mm. I was like, I, I, I invested immediately. Yeah. Mm. I thought, I'm in. Yeah. You know, because it's mitig mitigation of risks, looking at this conversation, and for every single startup in Australia that we help to be established, mm. Australia will be better off. Yeah. yeah. Because these startups, they will employ people. Mm. They will help us to grow as a nation, you know? And uh, this this is incredible. Like, it, 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 you, you are absolutely right. Let's mm. bottle up this thing. Mm. You know, the, 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 the hot source, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so good, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that it's you mentioned that. It's a startup idea. Absolutely, you know. <laughs> Sorry, man, I, I just no, want no, to no, say no, it's cool. <laughs> Look, and then finally, the, 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 the tractions with our corporate partnerships and term sheets, we have our own venture capital fund, okay. uh, which Julio's a supporter of, that, mm. that invests in every single one of our startups that, um, that manage to get through the program and are able to raise capital mm. in the future as well. So yeah. we, we sort of we follow on with our successful mm. startups as well with real capital. Yeah. yeah, it's just amazing. I think it's the sort of thing you sit there, like you said, you're a bookkeeper, you sit at your desk, you don't think about these sorts of things every day, but this is happening. Everyone in has front. a good idea in front of them. Everyone yeah. does. And, and you know, what, what I look for is people from within industries know the industry. Yeah. That's the whole point. Right? You yeah. don't have to be a coder anymore to be able to create a tech business. Yeah. You just have to know it and, and be able to exploit a business opportunity. And you see this every, every time, especially in larger organizations, you have have entrepreneurial people mm. who have identified something that could be really awesome for the corporate, yep. and they float it up to their boss. The boss goes, oh, look, we have to do a business case for that. It's going to take six <laughs> months, and you know, I don't have the budget for it. And you know, very invariably what happens is you get a bit of disgruntled employees. You know, they yeah. go, stuff it, I'm leaving. I'm doing it. I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah. And then they sell it back. It's brilliant, and yeah. we want that to happen. Yeah. Right? But what corporates need to do is start embracing the entrepreneurs that are within mm. them and learn how to work with those entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, you, you asked the question about risk, right? Mm. And, and this conversation for me, often people ask me, how, how, how come I have so much energy? And how come I'm so go-go? I live in the best country in the world and I know it. Mm. So I want you to know, I, I, it's a privilege and an honor for me to, 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 to be involved in so many businesses here. Australia is truly, I keep saying this mm. to people, this country is wired for people's successes. Yep. But now let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the map of the world and start to look at what's going on. Right? So we know that China is investing in India, and India is investing in China. What the heck was going on? Well, what's actually going on? Where Chinese companies are investing in Indian companies, and Indian companies are investing in Chinese companies, right? Mm. You start to see the collaboration and the new technologies coming in there. Everybody's aware of Silicon Valley, yep. cool? All, everywhere is aware as well of, of a bunch of other initiatives. But Australia is starting to lag behind. Mm. It really is. So, look, I, I don't want to be controversial, but I must say <laughs> but. this. But I must say this. I would like to start asking governments to get serious mm. about you know, taxation laws in Australia for startups. Mm. Just there are some other simple models around the world that are, are very, very good, right? So at least for startups. So have an archaic um, tax system you know, we somebody this this has to rise. So the idea from a from a mom and dad investor into a startup, or from a superannuation perspective, from a return perspective, from a buy in buy out perspective, and thirty cents on a dollar taxation on a new company, it may be a killer. So this conversation alone. Mm. So more entrepreneurs. I'm so glad we're having this mm. because more entrepreneurs starts to talk about it. Then it, we can go to governments and say, hey. This is not unreasonable. Mm. As a matter of fact, check this out. For every new company that starts, the state is better off, the nation is better off, have a look at the impact in the economy, mm. and so on and so forth. So I believe that the entrepreneurs hold the key 
to the future. Mm. If we are not addressing these things as a nation, we are losing trillions of dollars. Mm. Like for, for Sebastian and I, it's very common for us to see people with brilliant ideas, right? For distribution, yeah, let's take on the world. For distribution, let's distribute the ideas all over the planet, all mm. for it. But for an investment perspective, let's keep it here. Let's keep it in Australia. It's definitely, you know? it's definitely a cultural thing as well. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we had the Melbourne Cup. Yep. And I, 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 often, um, <laughs> I often quote this number that Australia, as a country, spends four times more per capita on that one horse race than we do in the previous 12 months on venture capital. This wow, is an interesting that's number. alarming. Right, yeah. it's, it's, three, it's roughly $2.70 per capita on venture capital over 12 months. Wow. And it's roughly $12 per capita on the Melbourne Cup. So when people say there's no risk capital in Australia, well, there is, because we're all punting it <laughs> on the ponies on the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. But what we're not doing is it's actually using it for the better good of the nation. Mm. So, so you see the power of Unstoppables. Unstoppables is a platform where we gather this conversation. Mm. So we already have involved in Unstoppables, um, you know, very high people in banking, very high people in insurance, very high people like saying, Hey, we want to play, we want to collaborate, mm. we, you know, we have startups. What we want to do is to create an ecosystem mm. where we are about Australia. We are about the future of Australia. Like it's about getting to the future first, bringing the technology home and have us as a nation getting mm. clear that we are, we, we, we got, we look, we got everything here mm. to actually be incredibly powerful in this corner of the world. Yep. You know, look at our neighbors. Look at the distribution ch channels at our door. Mm. And so let's be very clear. We have clever people here. We, have, we just need to get more people understanding that investing in these startups is not as risky as they may imagine. Mm. Cool? That there are processes, and we, let's call them sources, right? Mm. Let's call them hot chili sources. There are processes to mitigate that. It's just that people are not having the conversations. Mm. So people are unaware to get to the future first because the future conversations are not happening. So if most people watching, I, I like to suggest to ask to perhaps shake a bit. Mm. Is your Tuesday this week a photocopy of the Tuesday before? That is extremely dangerous. That is it. So you should have a disruptive Tuesday once a month. Yeah. Right? You should, you should have a disruptor to like, it's just as a concept, unstoppable, light to install, I trust the companies across Australia, disrupted Tuesday, once mm -hmm. a month, two hours, right? What could be that is coming to disrupt us? Mm. So I, we are very clear, like one of, the, one of the things that we're gonna do in Antarctica is to have a conversation about what is coming, mm. because it is coming, and he knows. Right? What is coming and who's gonna disrupt you? Mm. What could you cause? They're not only going to prevent future-proof your business, cool, but take you to the next level. Mm. That's the conversations we want to have in Unstoppables and gathering the momentum, raise the money, raise the people that will champion the ideas, mm. integrate and implement. That's what it's all about. It just makes so much sense. You've got, you know, two opposing sides here <laughs> and you've got the answer right here almost and you know that the gap exists. And things like that, having that disruptive Tuesday and empowering the future entrepreneurs within your company because they could be sitting in your accounts department or mm. sitting in the marketing department, you just never know. What are some other ways that we can start to bridge the gap, whether we're talking about your corporate companies, your you know um, emerging entrepreneurs or the people like yourself, Julio? I went to an event that Sebastian put together and um, a few weeks back and just the gathering mm. of the people there and the conversations. So we had some real future makers there, and some investors. In my world, mm. it's easier to get the guys that are established, that have the money, yep. right? For me, it's just to mingle them more. Mm. We want to create, a, we wanna create a, a platform, and that's what we call it Unstoppables, yep. where we mingle them more. Mm. So these guys that are you know, high-end executives, established entrepreneurs, established business people, that they start to realize that the young people, they actually got something going. Yeah. They actually, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and also, it's going back to that, that risk conversation again, mm. and just understanding that, yes, startups are risky. The payoffs are great, but mm. startups are risky. So the more conversations we have, the more we can help them address those four key risk areas. In particular, the team, the people around them, mm. and the traction assisting them with distribution channels. You know, if you've got 
in an organization, you've got internal risk rules that prevent you from doing work with a company that's less than 12 months old, maybe you want to revisit that. Mm. It'll be a lot cheaper to try that, um, that startup new technology. It might be better for you. It might fail, but it'll be cheaper for you. But the payoff, if you actually manage to achieve that mm. and manage to pull it off, not just for your own organization, but for the the ecosystem as a whole mm. is much, much broader and much, much better. So I think when we start having those, start addressing our own internal risk compliance issues, mm -hmm. which aren't legislation. These are mm. internal things that a corporate will have in front of them. So, so that's where that happens. Just, just watch what's happening, right? Mm. So uh, Sebastian and I met, we started talking. One of, the found, one of the things that we found in Unstoppables, and we're already addressing. Mm. So I want you to look at the business opportunity here. Yep. Sebastian is talking about team, team, good people, good people, good people. Now, you and I would agree that most people think they're good drivers, necessarily if they are or not. Yeah. It's a different conversation, but the fact that they can drive a car, yeah. they yeah. think they're a good 90 driver. 90% of people are above average drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But, so you're talking about good people. What is good people? Mm. So we have already identified that conversation. So as part of Unstoppables, we're already creating platforms and courses. This is already like happening now mm. that as we come back from Antarctica, we will implement in Australia courses going forward mm. that actually get people to get what is to be good, a good employee, a good player. Mm. Because sometimes people come and they just haven't learned to play. Yeah. So somebody may be playing basketball the whole entire lives, they show up, it's a soccer game. <laughs> What? I can't Oops. use my hands? <laughs> no. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Antarctica. I yeah. think we should touch on that so people don't think we're using some sort of, you know, jargon yeah. or something no. here. We are talking about the Antarctica. Um, so, 117 of probably uh, arguably Australia's greatest mines on a boat yes. in the middle of Antarctica. Tell us more about it. You can't go anywhere else. <laughs> the brilliant thing about this is yeah. we're, we're, we're stuck on this boat I really in Antarctica, hope nothing happens in, a, in an amazing environment that is completely putting people out of their out of their normal daily routines and yeah. lives. I mean, the sunlight is what twenty three hours a day, so you don't even have night time. So you you, you really like your, your senses and everything about you is completely out of whack. Mm. And then we're thrown in with all these people that are um, that are really innovative and creative and have the ability to access and tap into large distribution, large cha channels of marketing, large capital resources, mm. and have the ability to make change. You've, co you've created this amazing mini ecosystem yeah. of which to have a very powerful conversation. That's what excites me about this, this opportunity, is just, just to see what happens when you have this really crazy environment combined with these really awesome, crazy people um, with this huge, crazy potential. I really hope someone is taking notes on this boat because right. I can no, imagine no, we're some not of the only, ideas. We're, we're not only <laughs> taking notes, we're, doing a doc, we're making a documentary Excellent. and we're writing a book and yep. there'll be cameras, uh, live cameras, yep. there'll be all sorts of conversations. Like, but let me address a couple of things that you said. When we decided to do this, we went after the best company in the world yep. and to, to decide which company was the best. You know, the internet is a wonderful thing mm. and there's plenty of uh, blogs. So we went with Quark. Yep. So Quark, they have been doing expeditions to the North Pole and the South Pole over 20 years. Yep. I mean, I, I, incredible operation. They've been nothing but absolutely awesome. Mm. Okay, so we went and secured the whole vessel. So we went and bought absolutely every single bed, and we took the prime spot. So we're actually flying into Antarctica. Mm -hmm. We're spending 10 days in Antarctica coming out. Inside of that conversation, there's 117 entrepreneurs, but I want you to imagine Every single one of those entrepreneurs represent a minimum of 2,000 people in their networks. Yeah. So sometimes people make the confusion to, to think it's just 117 people. Mm. If you start adding up the zeros at the end, you know, to, talking about channels of distribution, right? Just the moment in which we started this conversation called the Unstoppables, right? Other businesses are already taking place. People yeah. are introducing people. Companies are being created since we started having this conversation in March, mm. right? So in terms of something happening, nothing has happened uh, to any of the voyages from uh, 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 Quark in the last 20 years. It's not going to be the hours, right? <laughs> That's going to happen. Yes, we, we have also some incredible, incredible facilitators that will come on board 
And what the facilitators are about is about engaging us, mm. right? We're going to be running problems. Like, we want to say, and this is going to be some of the, the we don't, I don't want to say here, yeah. it's going to happen on the boat. <laughs> there will be a couple of conversations in which we will say, hey, guys, this is a situation. This is because I believe the entrepreneurial mind yeah, yeah. will look at a problem, solve it, make profit out of it, mm. you know, and everybody's better off, yeah. right? So there'll be there'll be so the, the 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 idea of being in Antarctica is everybody's better off, yep. right? By the new ideas. So it's time out mm. to be innovative, to perhaps look through other lenses, right? So it's time out to do that. It's time out to sharpen the sword, come home with new ideas to implement. And perhaps new companies, new methodologies, all going to come mm -hmm. out out of this Antarctica. So when I say perhaps, I want to say to you, it's already happening, and we haven't even gone yet. Wow! Right? This is going to go exponential. Mm. Right? We already know, like the 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 Unstoppables is create is picking up a force of its own. It is so good to be on the ground, mm. and uh, and uh, and the amazing people that are already mm. showing up and say, let's champion for this thing. Yeah. Mm. So Antarctica was a cool place to go. Right, so excuse the pun, of course. Uh, yes, <laughs> but uh, we're already planning cool. a trip to to the Amazon, right? The following wow. year. So I could summarize for you unstoppables like this: amazing people going to amazing places mm. to have an amazing outcomes. Okay. Right. Can anyone get involved in this? Um, if there's people out there and they're interested, they've got these ideas, or they are in either of your positions or the emerging um, position of the. Um, that entrepreneur, can they get involved with this? Like, yeah. how do they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if you've got an awesome startup idea, go to bluechili.com. Yeah. There's a pitch to us button at the bottom. Click yeah. on that. Um, okay. we'll, we'll review it. If it's a good enough idea and we think you've got the right um, skills to be able to pull it off, yeah. uh, we'll partner with you and we'll create a do business it. together. Do it. Yeah. If you're having a good idea, look these guys up. Uh, Unstoppables are create to bring back home the spirit of entrepreneurship. Mm. Australia was built on the back of entrepreneurs. Mm. I still have an accent, but I'm 100% Aussie-fied, aussie whatever you want to call it. Doing oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 I think knew, that makes you I, not Australian. That's yeah. right, yeah. that's right. I knew I was in trouble when Brazil was playing in Australia a few World, world Cups ago, yeah. and I was going for Australia. That's why I was like, are you serious? What have I done? You know? But uh, the conversation here is, for us to bring this spirit of entrepreneurship back, mm. it is pretty much getting the younger people with new ideas, and younger is not age, mm. but the spirit of entrepreneurship is young in them. Mm. Let's bring it forward, give the methodology to, you know, fast track them, right? Let's get the other people with the money to become aware of the possibilities, yep. okay? So anyone watching this, if you are a startup, if you are already senior, it, the conversation is how do we get you to spike, to, to come and play as an entrepreneur? Mm. Because leadership in Australia needs to be reignited. Yeah. Right? I, I, I want to say this to you, and it's kind of, again, it's perhaps in people's faces, but we are losing a little terrain. Mm. It's time for us to become aware of this conversation and embrace it in full. Yep. We don't want to be taking the future from other nations telling us how the future is going to be played. Mm. We actually want to be future makers, yep. right? And we know of the raw talent there is here in Australia. Mm. It, it is an amazing, Australia produces amazing athletes. Australia also produces amazing entrepreneurs. Mm. All we want to do is less red tape, yep. more conversations, more empowerment, where people can actually engage mm. and become all that they come to become. People which ought to become all that they ought to become, yep. right? Great entrepreneurs, great business people, and it, it is in this platform mm. that we're going to bring it. So with Unstoppables um, after Antarctica, are there other events throughout the year that you yes. guys are going to hold, networking events, if people want to be part of the conversation? <laughs> oh, very much or is so. it just you two just talking? <laughs> I know, you're like, it's, it's so good to have Sebastian. We have some amazing people already on yeah. the crew. And uh, I, 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 I think I'll tell them. Jeffrey. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, we're building a balloon. <laughs> you had it here yeah. first. How <laughs> so, are you, you building, a, don't you blow up a balloon? No, i got to say this. The conversation here is this. We really, w w I'm, I'm talking about some of the people been asking us, what is the conversation after? What's yeah. the conversation after? So yep. we're going to go to, uh, to the Amazon. Yep. So we're going to go to Antarctica first. We're going to go to the Amazon. So I had some other guys who said, hey, we want to do something serious about mm. charity. We want to actually bring charity into this and so on. So how do we get media attention, get other people together? Somebody said, hey, 
Should you build a proper balloon and build a proper integration conversation where, because people love to ride in a balloon. Yeah. So really, yeah, you look at the, the, the sports, you look at Red Bull, you look at the conversation yeah. in itself. So we want to keep this adventurous. Yep. And yet, risk mitigation, right? Keep it safe. <laughs> so if people want to ride in a balloon or not, it becomes an incredible piece mm. in which we gather Yep. The innovators and the commerce. So it's all about these pieces mm. that have become incredible talking pieces. I'm going to Antarctica. I'm going to Amazon. I'm going to now be part of the balloon conversation. Yeah. And we start to do this. Why? Because people want to be in the know. Yeah. They want to be p part of something. And it's keep up this momentum, yep. right? And we are bringing in some serious corporate um, uh, partners with us simply to go, yeah, we want to be on the forefront. Uh, you know, we want to be on a forefront of these things, ahead of the way. Mm. So whatever it is that we will do, right, to integrate um, social needs, because we need entrepreneurship in social needs yep. as well, charity in itself, and all these conversations. Yep. So I know that my PR company is going to say, why did you talk about the balloon? It's a bit too premature, <laughs> right? It's because it's going to be news. We're, we're doing something amazing with that. Yeah, it sounds right? amazing. Uh, let me just digress for a second, and I want to do this. Uh, Sebastian right now has two or three companies mm. that we already know they will define the future in so many ways. Mm. So talking about balloon, that's hocus pocus, mm. wild stuff. But the wild stuff for me, for real, is to be part of a team of people that is investing in Blue Chili so that can happen. Mm. That to me is where the flight really is. Yeah. It's the flight to watch those young guys come through, right, tap into the process, and, uh, and know that they have support, they have funds, yep. they have access, and people that are entrepreneurs that can mentor and play. That's where the flight for me really mm. is, right? Well, yeah, and I, you talk about the future, and Sebastian, you're probably seeing everything happen so quickly and everything change. At it's a not as quick pace. as I'd want. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you think the future of, what do you think the future generations of entrepreneurs are going to look like? There's a very simple answer to this, yeah. is the future of entrepreneurship is whatever we make it. Mm. It's up to us to define that. It's I a like very that. simple answer. Yeah, it's whatever yeah. we want it to be. And it's up to people like Julio to help and assist with that, mm. correct? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, I, um, I would like to also say, uh, take this opportunity to thank all the people inside of Unstoppables already. It was just an idea. It's much bigger than, than Unstoppables. There's some amazing people really, really mm. causing the future, as you say. Uh, we're having some ama amazing uh, conversations about defining the future. Mm. And uh, is it possible that uh, we can bring education to the young people of Australia about entrepreneurism, mm. take the fear away, get people that are perhaps totally sa safety-oriented towards their investments to start to become aware that it only takes one little piece of technology to change the way we interface with energy. Mm to change a bunch of other things. Yeah. The way we to face with money to change a bunch of other things. Mm. When you start noticing insurance companies taking Bitcoin as payment, yep. it may just be a little piece of news on the news, yep. but that's a game changer. Mm. When you see people talking about printing in 3D real objects, right, just a piece of news, but also game changers. Yeah. And we want to have those conversations, we actually do, mm. right? And beyond the conversations is how do we implement the companies yep. to create the future. So 3D printing, why wouldn't we be masters of the universe mm. as far as that's concerned, bring it back to Australia, yeah. right? So these are the conversations that we, we can get so excited, but we need the channels of distribution, we need the people with the money, or people with the foresight. Mm. I'm sure that as we're speaking right now, people are engaging with their future right now as, as they sit here with us. All we want to do is to have robust processes mm. to deliver people the future that they want to create. So when Sebastian says it's whatever they want, we want to get behind that. Yeah. That's a great way to end up this discussion, yes, I think. Yes, yes. Um, I just want to go to a few questions now because we do have um, awesome. quite an engaged audience online as well. So first of all, from Tony. So... Julio, yes. um, thinking back 20 years ago, if things, if you had someone like Sebastian here right now, what would you have done differently when starting your company? I would definitely, I would, de I would have done two things differently. I would definitely hang out with Sebastian and say, are there best ways for me to take my products to a wider 
audience yep. faster. Back then, I did not have the technology yep. that Sebastian has at his fingertips now. Mm. So what I would have done, I would have played way more into social media, yep. okay, and engage with my clients from a heart to heart. It's very important because there is when you just want to make a sale, yep. right? There is a process, but when you want to engage, how do I use multimedia? And yet, it's not knock knock on a glass of the window. Mm. It is a real connection, yep. and it really explored this, the psychology and the integration of the technology at the same time. Perfect. And also from Jackie, so how can we get the message to government, so regarding removing or at least reducing impediments in the tax system with, sorry, when multiple reviews of the tax system to this end have failed to achieve change? Uh, well, that, Great question. Great Jackie. question. It is a question, but you know, things do change. I mean, one of the biggest things that startups have been sort of advocating for the last sort of, well, two or three years is the reforms to the ESOP program, ESOP being the Employee Share Options Program, where the current and soon to be replaced system means that if I issue shares in one of my companies, so Julio here, just uh, because I want him involved, mm -hmm. I want his energy, I want his time involved in my business, and my business is worth something, Julio will receive a tax bill on me giving him those shares. Even though Julio didn't pay for them or didn't receive an, uh, and, and didn't receive any money for it, mm. which means that Julio received this bit of paper that says he owns a percentage of a company, but needs to also pay tax on that. So Julio is actually getting punished for giving his time to me, because even though he's not receiving any financial consideration mm. for it, he has to pay tax on it. Because the current uh, system uh, for employees looks at uh, looks at equity and options as a source of revenue, and the, the ATO doesn't sort of see the difference between that and cash. Now that has been a, a constant uh, sort of stumbling block for startups to be able to employ the right talent at high salaries. They can't afford it. They don't have the money. Going back to those three things before, they don't have the money. So the only other currency they have is equity in the business. So come on, uh, on board with me, build a business with me, and I'll give you a share in that business. The problem is that employees are still getting taxed on that share, which is, which is crazy, crazy. Mm. So we've been advocating for that for three, four years, uh, really pushing it hard pretty much ever since it came in. Um, and fortunately, both sides of government have supported reforms that, and finally, they've gone through, and, and we're expecting um, the legislation changes to occur 1st of July. So the thing I wanted to say is that change can happen. It mm. just requires um, persistency and consistency. So we need to be persistent with our message and advocating for change. But more importantly, I think, is we need to be consistent around what that message is. Yes. If, as a community, we've all got different ideas of what we want to change, the message is lost. We need to pick one thing as a whole and focus on that one thing and drive that one thing forward. And that's how, we, that's how we'll actually end up mm. with change. You see, if you take this uh, one step further, then the question is how do we you know, communicate to government, right? Mm. See, there's a, a, a lot of people that would like to play. Mm. Let's, let's get serious about the fact that the people that are retired, that they've already been, let's call them senior entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. They have incredible acumen. Mm. They actually want to come out and play. So this change here, these two things, allows them to come and play because mm -hmm. they want to play. Yep. They still have acumen, energy, they're good at what they do. They are senior athletes mm. of being entrepreneurs, yeah. right? Not only that, it also facilitates for people that want to invest. So the whole conversation, I, I invest my time, I invest my money. This, this, so the more startups we have, the more the pressure on the government mm. to change. So what we need to do is to get more companies starting. Yeah. You Makes know, sense. and so there's more pressure for us to say, hey guys, mm. catch on with the times. Mm. You know, let us not be punitive to those that want to start companies, to those that want to invest in companies, and those that want to play, mm. right? So, and the more people that are watching this start to blog about it, talk mm. about it, push it through, send to their local member. Send this very question to mm. their local member. It starts to filter through Parliament. Yeah. Off we go. Great. Um, another one from Anara. So, how can a budding entrepreneur, particularly interested in social enterprise, tap into networks such as Unstoppables and the expertise of senior entrepreneurs when there are not available finances to pay for high-end experiences such as Antarctica and some other things available? Are there cheaper options to join this space? Are there scholarship programs? How can we encourage other people oh, within organisations to be part of this? I'll let Julia talk about a, a program to, to encourage this sort of exact thing, yeah. but I just want to say one thing. If you if you have a great idea and have a lot of passion and energy, the best thing you can do is just go out and talk to people. 
you'd be very, very surprised at how open and receptive experienced entrepreneurs are, experienced business leaders are, when you've got a lot of energy and drive. There's this whole culture in business leaders and entrepreneurship about giving back and mentoring. Mm. And if you just approach these people, some of them will say no. Some of them may not, may not return your, uh, your email at all. Mm. But then there'll be a few people that do. And guess what? They're the people you actually want to be talking yes. to. Mm. Yes. I, we, have, um, we have issued a few tickets on a boat mm. uh, in a competition. And the competition, we put out five um, topics. And we ask people to reply you know, with a few words what we would do about those topics. Yep. So we'll be issuing some. Uh, so if people want to play, mm. okay, and they don't have the finances, we will we'll facilitate mm. for some of them to come and play. Um, and also, on stop is not just again Antarctica is the inaugural trip, yeah. right? But there will be events across Australia. We we've been doing them in mm. Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane, right? Where people can actually come together, yep. and there will be conversations, topics, the swap of know-how, mm. the swap of let's catch up and and do these conversations, yeah. right? So uh, I, I would say, I would also follow uh, what Sebastian say. Mm. If you have a good idea, start to play. Yeah. If feedback, do not, even if it be the most negative feedback, take it as learning to play the game. Yeah. You know, and as a shutdown. Right, what other questions should I be asking? Mm. You know, and uh, yeah, come and play. Um, and just on that, guys, uh, within 48 hours when we send out the recording, we'll also put a link to Unstoppable's website um, and Priscilla, um, and I'm looking at her right now, um, her email address. So any questions you can ask her, she'll be delighted to, to receive any of those questions. Um, and one final question from Sandra. So our company is thinking of starting an innovation session once a week with employees. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a good idea? And if we do do this, how can we, how can we stop it from getting too many ideas? Oh, there's nothing wrong with too many ideas. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yes, no, you yes. want more ideas. Yeah, yes, yes, it's a yeah, good thing. Yeah, you want the more ideas, don't you? You want more ideas. Yeah. You, can, you can get even weird ideas yeah. sometimes. There's nothing no, to do with the topic. No such thing as a bad That's idea. That's right. Yeah. Look, you know? yes, it's a good idea. Yes, and it's so exciting that you're actually doing this in yeah. your organization. Um, a few things that I would suggest is try and do it somewhere else. Try and take yeah. people outside, not necessarily Antarctica, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but try and take people Wednesday outside. Wednesday morning coffee to Antarctica, anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you're next to a park, go to the park. Go somewhere outside where there's a lot of distractions in the background because that'll focus your immediate um, brain on what's happening here mm. and now and allow you to be more creative with the process. So take yourself outside of that environment. It'll also make it more exciting for the staff. So this is not just a... Uh, just another staff thing to do. This is something that's exciting. People look forward to do. You know, do it on a boat. Go on the harbour. Go walk across the bridge. Mm. Um, you know, we, we do sessions with some of our, our team members where we, we we go for a walk around around uh, Piermont and around the harbour just to get the oxygen flowing and get the, mm. the mind thinking. Um, we do sessions in Hyde Park. It's a beautiful area. Just you know, pick a spot of ground, sit down, and just have a chat. Mm. Pull up a whiteboard. You know, bring up a little portable whiteboard, stick in the sand, and just draw it. It doesn't matter where you do it. But I think if you do it outside of the environment, it makes it a lot more fun and exciting. Mm. I would say also, you know, if ask anyone to do a push up, they can do a push up. Yeah. How many push ups can you do? Yeah. So when you start with this concept, you may actually have people just be silent, watching, see how mm. it goes. Please persist. Mm. And tell your other business friends that you are doing it. Mm. Uh, and, and what you will find is as the idea starts to come, some of them may not be relevant like in the immediate, but it's mm. amazing how somebody may be even six months or 12 months ahead of time, mm. right? Uh, just the ideas itself, because too many is, and how do you give them priority? How do you give the people that are launching the ideas? Make it a game. Mm. Yeah. Make I'll it a game where all the ideas get placed and let the peers themselves you know, vote for the best ideas and make sure also that you have a mechanism to implement them yeah. and mm. acknowledge them. And another thing also we do at JDL is sometimes an idea gets uh, presented, gets launched, and it gets to morph when it's halfway up. I like started to be implemented, and somebody else has an idea about the idea. And that mm. is exciting. But sometimes the original idea, the, the, the original person of the idea may get like, no, 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 no. Let's have a, like upfront agreements about yeah. ideas may evolve. <laughs> you know, and they may come out, it's like, have it a, a game around it. That would be so empowering for yes. employees, I can yes. just imagine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that brings us to the end, guys. Right. <laughs> well, it went really quick, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's been a very exciting hour, and I hope everyone out there has also um, got some ideas or even some inspiration. I think, you know, the whole concept, like I said earlier, people joining who aren't necessarily looking to go and create a startup, but internal innovation and empowering internal people and seeing people within your company as entrepreneurs as well is so important. Um, so a few very different concepts, um, which I think are all just as amazing as the next. Um, but I want to thank both of you. Thank You've you. been very entertaining guests. Um, and yeah, like I said, everyone, keep a lookout for the recording. Um, we'll also send you details to the Unstoppables. But any questions, go look at JDL, go look at Blue Chili, look up chili sauce. Do you reckon someone's going to come to you in the next week with a chili sauce idea? Like for a natural sauce? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's happened. <laughs> okay, I was going to say. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks very much.